Hey everybody, this is Caesar with Small Engine Velocity coming at you with another series. We just finished up the Ruckus series and now we're moving on to something that I have promised since last year. Oh, no. Actually, it's been two years. I got this when I started my current job that I'm working at and I just celebrated my two year anniversary there. So it's been two years since I've had this kit. Well, for those of you that don't know and are just joining me now, a while back I bought a BBK kit or big bore kit for the Yamaha Zuma, which is behind me on the rack now. It is happily on the rack. <laughs> I intended on putting it in that summer and I guess I missed two summers since then. If you look at the kit, it comes with the head gasket, it comes with the G-clip, the piston, the cylinder head, no, not the head, the jug, the piston, the rings, a cam, supposedly a performance cam, and a larger fuel injector. And what's cool about this kit, it's a 158cc kit for the Yamaha Zuma, is that it supposedly doesn't require any tuning to the ECU. Because if, you, if you're wondering, the 2016 Yamaha Zuma is fuel injected. So there would have to be some tuning that would have to go on if you had made it, I guess, any bigger than this. I don't know, we'll see. This, this is the whole point of this. I've done the research to go ahead and how to put the, the head on, uh, excuse me, I keep saying head, the cylinder on, but as far as taking it apart, I have no idea. I mean, how hard could it be? Just take a bunch of plastics off and stuff like that. So if you look at this, I've already had put it on the rack. I did a little bit of inspecting and uh, at the same time, while I'm gonna go ahead and start this project, my, my daughter dropped it when she was riding it around in the neighborhood, broke some plastics. Uh, I ordered some new plastics. They should be here by the time I get close to the end of this build. Supposedly it's supposed to come in April. So this won't release until the end of March or so. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start taking it all apart, take the plastic off, take the seat bucket out, everything I can get to without actually disassembling, dis dismounting the motor yet, then we'll stop. We'll take a look at how this motor mounts on and then we'll move on to taking the motor off. I've already got a place set up where we're gonna put it on and, and see if we can uh, start uh, taking a look at what we got ahead of us. Anyways, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Okay, so let's go ahead and start taking the plastics off this bike and see what we're up against. Okay, well, that was easier than I thought it was. There's like four bolts holding this whole bucket on that gets you direct access into literally everything down here. I could have done this when I did the intake mod that I did. So it looks like apart from here and here, and then down here, that's the only thing, minus wires, that's holding all of this on. Uh, one thing I'm confused about is the rear disc and disconnecting that. Minus that, it looks like everything else is just wires. Okay, well, <laughs> it's really dirty in here too. So I guess, oh look, there's the battery, which by the way, it took me forever to figure out where the battery was. And then when I saw the battery, I was like, holy crap, that thing is gigantic compared to the, to the Ruckus battery. Anyways, I do need to replace these, take these plastics off eventually because of course, like I said, they're cracked, but we can do that after we get the motor just mounted. Uh, I did put some blocks down here on the bottom part of the mount. So if I do dismount the motor, then it has something to hang off of. But let me look over the brakes real quick to see how that's gonna work to get the disc off. Do I have to remove the whole caliper or something, which is probably a true statement. Um, I'm hoping not to have to disconnect the uh, exhaust. I do not need to take the O2 sensor off, but let's see. I'll be right back. Okay, so I figured out a couple of things 
that you have to do to get the motor off of this Zuma. And some of it's pretty amazing. So let's take a look. So first, the CVT has a breather cover that goes over here that's connected. So that's disconnected. The brake caliper has two bolts here and here, which I put back in here and I was able to lift it out of the back wheel. I did have to loosen the exhaust. I took out the O2 sensor back here. And what I'm really enjoying about the motor is that the power and the ground and the stator and everything is all connectors. So you can literally disconnect the harness by just taking out some clips. Uh, all, the only hose I had to disconnect, disconnect, is this hose that went to the bottom of the throttle body. Uh, I still haven't quite figured out how to take this one off yet, but um, everything was a connector, so it made it super easy. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of a once over on here. Got the spark plug out and everything, and now I'm gonna work on, make, I'm gonna check one more time for cables so I don't yank on any on the way out, and then take out the motor mount from here. Now there's a bracket right here that goes out and then connects to this that goes to the motor. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this bolt out. I don't see anything else connecting to the motor from here. So it's a front mount bolt. This would be kind of cool. This whole motor would be cool on a ruckus, but you know, <laughs> and these up here. So give me a few to go ahead and once over those wires and then we'll go into a lapse of pulling the motor out. Anyways, be right back. Okay, well, here is the motor outside of the, the scooter, which is pretty clean, but then if you really think about it, it only has like 12 or 1400 miles on it right now. Uh, but it's obviously way different than a GY6 motor with these little caps to do valve adjustments, uh, a sensor up here on the head, went ahead I took out the throttle body I don't know if there's any improvement I can make on the inside but I may try to polish some of the walls in here maybe I don't know we'll see if it's super necessary uh, I didn't realize that it was a double throttle cable so there's a push and pull on there that's pretty cool like I mentioned before the entire harness is disconnectable which is how I made the ruckus's harness for the most part now uh, as I took bolts out I put them back in to where they were so I don't lose them and then all the pieces that I have left that I need to make sure I keep safe, I've put on this cart right here, which all these pieces will be cleaned. I think after the big board kit, this Koso front piece that's vented is gonna play a really good role in keeping this larger air-cooled motor ventilated well. So yeah, I'm glad this was here when I, I purchased this. So. 
kudos to the previous owner. Anyways, there's the, uh, the motor. So there you go. The motor's out, the plastic's soft. Like really all that's left is for me to do a little bit of a rewing, go over the process of what it looks like underneath there. Uh, I didn't realize that in the box there's also a timing gear. <laughs> Good thing I didn't throw away the box. But apart from that, I think we're done with this particular video. So stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, click that bell, so that you know when the next video is going to hit and you can follow with this series on the 158cc big bore kit for the Yamaha Zuma 125 2016. See you in the next video.